sa pagkunitan ng ikalimang daang taong anibersaryo ng Kristyanismo sa Pilipinas, ang pambansang dambana ng mahal na ina ng laging saklolo ay naitalaga bilang isa sa mga Jubilee Churches, Simbang Hubileo, kung saan may Porta Santa o Jubilee Door. Sa mga makikibahagi ay ipagkakaloob ang plenary indulgence na ikinawad ni Papa Francisco. Ito ay natatanging biyaya ng pagpapatawad sa kaparusahan mula sa mga kasalanan. Kalapit nito ay ang pagsasagawa ng mga sumusunod. Ang Pangumpisal Ang pagtanggap ng banal na Eucharistia At ang pagdarasal para sa Santo Papa Ipanalangin din ang katapatan ng mga Pilipino bilang mananampalataya, pagdami ng may bukason sa pagpapari, hermano at madre, pagtataguyod ng pamilya. Magtapos sa ama namin, sumasampalataya at pagtawag kay Inay Maria. Sa pagpasok natin ng Porta Santa, Alalahanin at isapuso din natin ang hamon na maging masigasig na tagapagpalaganap ng Ebanghelyo. Ibahagi natin ang piyaya ng pananampalatayang ating natanggap bilang mga misunero, misunera ng nakilang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We celebrate today the memorial of St. Charles Luanga and his companions, the proto-martyrs of Africa. There were 21 of them who were martyred because they remain steadfast to their faith. And despite the unreasonable demands of the king, they didn't budge. They remained faithful to Jesus. Some were tortured, others were killed by the sword, others died by burning. Saint Charles is the patron saint of African youth social action to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that Amen. I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is your church, watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Luanga and his companions, 
may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrive in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought the charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who have died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there is then trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For us the heavens are high above the earth. So surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you angels, you mighty strength, who is bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord to be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John glory to your Lord after Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them he said to Simon Peter Simon son of John do you love me more than these Simon Peter answered him yes Lord you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, 
feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify to God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When someone says to you, follow me, is that a command, a request, or an appeal? Follow me. Whatever it is, there is the challenge to follow him. Jesus calls Peter and the other disciples to follow him. When Jesus calls Peter and the disciples to follow me, it doesn't mean that all the 12 apostles are to become priests or religious. Peter and the rest of the apostles, they didn't become priests. They are not religious either. They are lay people and most of them are married. But they responded to the challenge of Jesus to follow him. All of us are called to follow Jesus. The invitation, the appeal, and maybe a command, follow me, is always there. The moment we have been baptized, when we receive the sacrament of baptism, there's always the challenge, the demand, and the appeal of Jesus to follow him. But to follow Jesus does not mean that all will be all right. Everything will be okay. There are always challenges, difficulties, setbacks, trials, and even death to follow Jesus. He doesn't promise us that the road in following him will be smooth and nice. Just as Charles Luanga, St. Charles, whom we honor today, together with his companions, when they decided to follow Jesus, to remain steadfast in their faith, they didn't experience a smooth kind of life. In fact, they were harassed. They were tortured, tortured, killed by sword, and then they were burned because of their steadfast faith in Jesus. All of us, I said, are called to follow Jesus. The invitation, come, follow me, is always there. And today, he said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? It's not just one question, but thrice. Three times he asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And every time Jesus asked Peter that question, Peter's response was, Yes, Lord, I love you. You know I love you. 
When Jesus calls us to follow him, he calls us to love. But then that love is not, does not mean that everything is okay, everything would be all right. There will, there will always be challenges, setbacks, roadblocks every time we follow Jesus. But rest assured that when we respond to him, when we follow him, we are not alone because he is always with us, journeying with us, accompanying us in our journey as we try to follow him. Our Psalms today says, Bless me, Lord, and all my being bless his holy name. We pray that God may bless us all as we try to follow him. Mindful that we are sent on the same mission as Peter's, we ask God the Father to strengthen our faith. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Father and those who exercise authority in the church may be guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that married couples may be sensitive to each other's needs and find true happiness in their lives together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may receive light, happiness, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, may we never lose faith and hope amidst this COVID-19 pandemic and find strength to express social solidarity with one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who offered Masses to be celebrated in the National Shrine of our Mother of Perpetual Help, may God answer their petitions and hear their thanksgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And solemns we offer to God our personal intentions. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to save the world through the work of your church. May we be inspired by the example of Peter to labor for the spread of your kingdom on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the holy church. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted the blessed martyrs grace to die rather than sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, St. Charles Luanga and his companions poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the twofold, so that they may become for us to body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, brought it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jesuit, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, especially St. Charles and his companions, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I don't say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Oratio Imperata Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other See us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Our Mother of Perpetual Help. Pray for us. Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs. May what help them to endure torment, we pray, make us in the face of trials, steadfast in faith and in charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.